Hello, in this video we're going to look at an intertemporal choice problem. Uh, here we're going to maximize utility over two time periods. So here's the setup. Uh, the consumer's utility depends on a composite good over two time periods. Utility equals C times C, where the subscripts represent the period of consumption. So C subscript 1, units of good C are the composite good consumed in period 1. And likewise, C subscript 2 is defined in a similar manner. We're going to normalize the price of the composite good to equal $1. And we're going to assume that there is no inflation in this model. The first thing we're going to do is construct a budget constraint. The consumer has income in two periods. M subscript 1 is income in period 1. M subscript 2 is income in period 2. The consumer can borrow money in period 1 and repay it back in period 2 with interest, or the consumer could save part of his income in period 1, allowing the consumer to spend more in period 2. The interest rate uh, we're going to assume is R. So you can borrow and save at an interest rate of R. The level of consumption in period 2 is going to be given by the following equation. So consumption in period 2 will be your income in period 2 plus any saving you might have done in period 1 plus the interest earned on that saving. Putting in uh, equations for this, consumption in period 2 is your income in period 2 plus any savings you have in period one. And you could have negative saving in period one, so this could be negative. Um, and your interest earned on saving in period one. So if you did save, you'll have some interest income, which is just going to be the difference between uh, your income in period one minus your consumption in period one. Again, this could be negative two. If you were to borrow in period one, you would have to repay your loan plus some interest. Okay, moving on here. Uh, what I did here on the right-hand side is I just factored out a one plus R term to give us the following. So one times M subscript one minus C subscript one gives us back this. And then R times what's in parentheses here gives us back this part over here. Uh, one thing we should do now is let's uh, just calculate the slope of this, uh, of this budget line uh, by taking the derivative of this budget line with respect to consumption in period 1. If you do that, you'll get minus 1 plus R. So notice this 1 plus R in parentheses is being multiplied by minus C subscript 1. And so the, the derivative of that is just minus 1 plus r. And what does that slope tell us? It tells us every dollar saved in period 1 increases the amount of the composite good that can be purchased in period 2 by 1 plus the interest rate. Uh, on the other hand, every dollar spent in period 1 decreases the amount of the composite good that can be purchased in period 2 by 1 plus the interest rate. All right, moving on. So just rewriting our expression for consumption in period two that we saw on the last screen there. Now I'm going to simplify this by dividing through by one plus r. Okay, so I divided everything through by one plus r. So income in period two divided by uh, one plus r. Um, this 1 plus R then is going to be divided by consumption in period 2. And then the C subscript 1 term, I'm just moving over to the left-hand side. So, we, you know, we could call this our budget constraint. Uh, some would refer to this as a budget constraint present value format. We're sort of discounting consumption in period 2 back to period 1 by 1 plus the, the interest rate. And we're discounting income in period 2 back by 1 plus the interest rate. All right, so let's uh, do a numerical problem. Here is our utility function. Let's specify the interest rate at 10%, income in period 1, income in period 2, and we want to find the utility maximizing values of C subscript 1 and C subscript 2. Let's do this 
just rewriting our problem once again. So we're gonna find the utility maximizing values. First thing we need to do is get the March utility of the composite good in period one. I'll take the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to C subscript one, and we'll get back C subscript two. I'll take another partial derivative. I'll take the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to the uh, consumption in period two. Doing that, we get C subscript one. Let's form the marginal rate of substitution, uh, defined as the marginal utility C subscript one over the marginal utility of C subscript two. Uh, doing that, making our substitutions, we get the following for the marginal rate of substitution. Uh, for utility maximization, the marginal rate of substitution will equal minus the slope of the budget line. So basically, we're just trying to find where the slope of the indifference curve is tangent to the slope of the budget line. So making our substitutions here, marginal rate of substitution minus the slope of the budget line. Again, we found the slope of the budget line is minus 1 plus r, so just losing the minus sign there. Solving for C subscript 2 gives us this result. Solving or simplifying a little bit by plugging in for R uh, 0.1. So 1 plus 0.1 is just 1.1. And now we're going to plug this into our constraint. Remember, here's our constraint. Uh, making sub -sub some substitutions. Uh, 1 plus R is just 1.1. C subscript 2 is 1.1 C subscript 1, so that's going in the numerator here, and putting in our values for income, and again, putting in our value for R here is 0.1. We get this result, and we're going to just solve for C subscript 1. So rewriting that last equation and simplifying further. This, the left-hand side is just 2C subscript 1. The right-hand side is 210. And so C subscript 1 equals 105. And since C subscript 2 is 1.1 times C subscript 1, making our substitution, uh, consumption in period 2 is 115.5 units. In this problem, the consumer borrowed money in period one because he spent $105 on the good but only had $100 of income. Remember, we specified income in, at, in period one is $100. So the consumer borrowed uh, some money, $5. So the consumer repaid the loan in period two. With the interest rate at 10%, the consumer paid $5.50 uh, in order to borrow $5 in period one leaving the consumer with $115.50 to spend in period two. So you had a $5 loan with 10% interest, so repaying the loan is $5.50. So you only had $115.50 to spend in period two. Uh, when the good costs a dollar, you can only buy $115, or only $115.50 worth of the good. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.